Well, looks like we got one more update after all regarding CD Projekt and Cyberpunk 2077 during these troubled times when Cyberpunk 2077 launched in a state that it shouldn't have. And as a result, we're seeing trust for CD Projekt wane quite a bit from customers, from the community, from media outlets, from developers within the company who are kind of protesting against leadership because of how they managed the project. And also we got investors who we can see just from the stock here alone that confidence is waned quite a bit and it still continues to kind of go up and down but in this lower register down here. But beyond a lot of investors pulling out, there's also the matter of lawsuits that we're seeing organized, class action lawsuits against CD Projekt because of deceitful practices that not only fooled customers and media outlets, but also investors who were very much thrown off by the state of the game. They expected that it would be in a much better state and that the game would be received incredibly positively, but what we got instead was a situation nobody really expected because CD Projekt kind of hid many of the trouble aspects of the project. Now, I did previously talk about lawsuits levied against CD Projekt. I mainly discussed this lawsuit from Mikolaj, who said that uh, CD Projekt might have violated Article 286 of the Penal Code after they misrepresented their project, their product, in order to obtain financial benefits. That's the accusation. That same day, we saw Wolf Haldenstein, Adler, Freeman, and Hearst, LLP, also engage in a class action lawsuit resulting from allegations of materially misleading information to their shareholders and investing public. A lot of investors felt blindsided, and as a result, they might have lost quite a bit of money as CD Projekt stock tanked. Which brings us to today and the latest development on that front. Another law firm is now issuing their own class action lawsuit. This is the Rosen Law Firm from New York, and they recently released a press release that details exactly why they're pursuing this lawsuit and what their goal is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and read some of the relevant portions of this statement. Let's start with this intro paragraph here. So this was posted on December 24th, 2020, literally Christmas Eve. And they said, Rosen Law Firm, a global investor rights law firm, announces it has filed a class action lawsuit on behalf of purchasers of the securities of CD Projekt between January 16th, 2020 and December 17th, 2020, inclusive. The lawsuit seeks to recover damages for CD Projekt investors under the federal securities laws. And then the second paragraph here goes into even more detail. According to the lawsuit, defendants throughout the class period made false and or misleading statements and or failed to disclose that one, Cyberpunk 2077 was virtually unplayable on the current generation Xbox or PlayStation systems due to an enormous number of bugs. To be fair, it is mainly the base PS4 and Xbox One where the game feels less playable but on PS4 Pro and One X, there are enough issues where I wouldn't suggest people buy that version of the game either. Much better on PS5 and Series X, but so many people, millions of people are still playing on base PS4 and base Xbox One, so tons of customers were still affected. This is still a PR shit show, and very few people got to experience the game in its best state on a high-end PC. The PC version is, despite being the best version, still not ideal it's still not finished and fully polished as it should be but it's so much worse on the console versions on the last gen versions number two as a result sony would remove cyberpunk 2077 from the playstation store and sony microsoft and cd project will be forced to offer full refunds for the game this is definitely something nobody expected sony actually going so far out of its way to flat out remove the game from the store miss out on the revenue cut that they, they'd be getting from the massive sales of this game. And while they did sell quite a few copies in the initial launch period, the game being delisted before Christmas, before the holidays, yeah, that's a lot of sales that are going to be missed out on. This is all, of course, going to damage CD Projekt's ability to grow as much as investors expected. They want their investment to grow, but now that's obviously not going to happen to the degree that 
many expected, given all of the issues and the fact that the game is not being sold on the more popular of the console platforms. At least on the PlayStation Store, it's still being sold physically, technically, but still certainly far from an ideal scenario. Now we do know that the game managed to sell a whopping 13 million units as of December 20th, and that includes refunds subtracted from the total number but a lot of analysts actually, as you can see in this Bloomberg article, expected higher numbers. And there are some analysts who predict that refunds were somewhere in the 3 million. So we could have seen 16 million units sold instead of 13, potentially more if the PR surrounding the game had been good. And maybe people wouldn't be holding off on purchasing the game. So there's certainly damage that was done despite the still huge success. Last but not least, number three, consequently, CD Projekt would suffer reputational and pecuniary harm, and four, as a result, defendant's statements about its business operations and prospects were materially false and misleading and or lacked a reasonable basis at all relevant times. When the true details enter the market, the lawsuit claims that investors suffered damages. So basically, investors are claiming they were not kept in the loop about what was actually going on at CD Projekt what the actual state of the game was. And apparently when you look at all of the lawsuits levied against CD Projekt Red as of right now, apparently there is basically four lawsuits going on at once against the company, as detailed here by Daniel Ahmad, who said that Rosen Law is just one of four law firms planning to file a lawsuit against CD Projekt Red. A lot of people have claimed it's ironic that investors are suing CD Projekt when they were the ones who pressured CD Projekt to launch the game when it did. Though, that is actually not the case. Daniel Akhmat explains here, I've seen a few people say, didn't investors pressure them to get it out? That's not quite the case. The argument is more like, investor, is the game good? Can you release it this year? CDPR? It's all good, bro. CD Projekt expressed confidence that this would be a successful launch. And then we saw what happened when Cyberpunk 2077 released. Investors looked at the whole mess and went... What the fuck? And this is actually 100% true. Hell, by CD Projekt's own admittance, you can see right here during their emergency call shortly after the game's botch launch, they said, I wouldn't say that we felt any external or internal pressure to launch on the date other than the normal pressure, which is typical for any release. It wasn't, you know, people, the community pressuring them and telling them you should release the game now that made them release the game when it clearly wasn't ready, it wasn't the investors, this was CD Projekt's decision. It was CD Projekt who told the community and who told investors that this game would be ready and that they were polishing everything up and that it would be a great launch come December. Bloomberg, in fact, highlighted some information they got from sources within CD Projekt. Apparently, during a meeting with the members of the board between them and the employees, one employee asked the board why it had said in January that the game was complete and playable when that wasn't true. They did indeed say in this January statement announcing a delay that we're currently at a stage where the game is complete and playable. Apparently that was just a complete lie. And obviously investors saw this statement and assumed, oh, okay, so the game's moving along quite nicely. A lot of the customers assume the same, media outlets assume the same. Beyond that though, when investors asked CD Projekt directly for an update on the state of certain aspects of the project, CD Projekt issued statements that were misleading, flat out false. Daniel Akhmad here details how there's a quote below from before the launch of the game when CDPR was asked about the delay. Let's actually go to the lawsuit document. So this is section 21 here that reads, on October 28th, 2020, CD Projekt held a conference call. There, defendant Kaczynski announced that the release date for Cyberpunk 2077 would be delayed by three weeks to fix issues with the current generation console versions, stating that even though the game has been certified on the current gens by both Sony and Microsoft, some very final optimization processes for such a massive and complex game require a bit of additional time. He elaborated that the game is releasable on the 19th, and having those three more weeks just gives us more changes to fix this and that so we feel secure. So basically, CD Projekt made it seem as though the last-gen versions of Cyberpunk 2077 just needed a little touching up when the reality was that they were nowhere near ready for launch. Three weeks delay wasn't gonna be enough to fix those versions of the game. They were far from ready. 
and they led investors and customers to believe as though they would launch in an adequate state. During that same call, when asked about problems with the current generation console versions, defendant Nowakowski stated, I wouldn't say there is a problem because there's nothing wrong with Xbox or PlayStation 4 versions. There's optimizations to be handled also because of how we were approaching things from the get-go in terms of development. So there is no problem with Xbox or PlayStation 4 to be honest. This is very reminiscent of how on November 2020, CD Projekt during an investor's call said that the current gen versions of the game, or now the last gen versions of the game, run surprisingly well on those platforms. So this is a lie, and obviously what was said here during the investor's call about there being no problems on Xbox One and PS4, that's also clearly a lie. Investors probably have a case to make here assuming that everything here is true. Now, CD Projekt, unsurprisingly, won't go down without a fight. In fact, according to this December 26th article from Bloomberg, it was reported that the makers of Cyberpunk have vowed defense against the class action lawsuit claims. Scrolling down here, it is reported that CD Projekt said it will defend itself vigorously after an investor sued the company for allegedly misleading holders of its depository receipts and incurring losses. I'm starting to get the feeling that these lawsuits won't just fizzle out. It looks like the investors are pretty serious about these lawsuits and with four of them happening at once, you know, at least one or two of them are bound to go decently far and we'll see how the judges see this whole situation and who they rule in favor for. Looking at the evidence presented thus far, given what we know about the situation surrounding Cyberpunk 2077, the deceitful marketing surrounding the game and the manipulation of the review process, you know, I'm thinking that investors may have some merit here, especially after showing quotes like this right here. At the same time, CD Projekt is a pretty major company with a lot of resources and manpower. No doubt they're going to hire the best lawyers they can to fight this. I have little doubt that we'll hear more about how all of this develops in the coming months. Until then, though, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on the accusations levied against CD Projekt by investors. Let me know what you think about all of these lawsuits happening at once and how you think this will all resolve itself. Drop a comment and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.